Good day, guys. Welcome to another episode of CryptoLite. Today, I'll be introducing you to an upcoming ICO called Wono. Wono describes itself as a decentralized P2P platform for exchange or rent of any asset and services without currency and taxation expenses. Think of the blockchain version of Airbnb, Uber, Freelancer, and more. To find out more about Wono, keep watching this video. P2P or peer-to-peer -peer businesses are the new wave of businesses that are disrupting the world's economy. Examples of P2P businesses that have risen to household names in the past decade include Airbnb, Uber, and freelancing websites like TaskRabbit, Freelancer, Upwork, and more. According to a report by PricewaterCooper back in 2015, the sharing P2P economy in 2014 generated a revenue of $15 billion, and this is expected to increase to $335 billion by 2025. So it's a huge market with a lot of growing potential. Juniper Research also reported that the most promising sectors for sharing base or P2P economy currently are the accommodation rentals like Airbnb, transportational like Uber services, as well as freelancing work. These are therefore the main industries that Wono also focuses on. P2P businesses are significantly cheaper than P2B businesses. P2B businesses are businesses like hotels. Staying in an Airbnb, which is a P2P business, on average is 60% cheaper than staying in a hotel. This is the main reason why people are moving towards Airbnb and P2P businesses. However, the truth is that even that 60% discount is still overpriced and can be reduced much more. The reason it is overpriced because of the high commission rates that the middleman companies like Airbnb and Uber charges. These companies charge an average commission of 30 to 40% of every transaction. They can charge so much commission because they have basically monopolized the whole P2P industry and have very little competition. This forces the service provider or the asset owner to charge significantly more fees to cover the high commission rates. Wano then presents itself as the solution to this growing centralization. As a blockchain project, Wano will only charge 1 to 5%, so only a fraction of the cost, and aims to reduce the cost to vendors and users greatly. Wano can charge such low commission rates because as a blockchain project, all transactions on Wano are run by smart contracts, and so they bypass expensive middlemen like Uber or Airbnb and allow the customer to liaise directly with the asset owner. Another benefit of a blockchain project like Wano is that it runs on cryptocurrency and not fiat currency. In most countries around the world, cryptocurrency is still considered a digital asset, not money, which means that all Wano tokens exchanged within the system is not taxable until it is converted to fiat. Furthermore, if the token exchanges are done away from the, the public exchanges like Coinbase, which is partnered with the government, but if the actual token exchanges are done from one private wallet to another private wallet, there is no way for the taxation officers to monitor the transactions, which means that as long as the Wano tokens are kept within the private wallet and the Wano economy and not converted to fiat, the person earning the Wano tokens cannot be taxed. In certain countries such as Australia, the tax rates can go up very high to over 40%. So bypassing that cost is a major incentive for costs and charges to be the lowest in the world on Wano. To ensure that there is a good use case for Wano tokens in their own economy, the Wano platform is designed for several sharing industries. So it's not just uh, transportation like Uber, it's rentals plus transportation plus freelancing services plus what they call miscellaneous assets of basically anything. Potentially, a user could even rent out his guitar or gym equipment for a day if they wanted to. The average user on the platform can play four different roles in the system. The first is he can be a customer. This is pretty self-explanatory. The customer is the party who will pay Wano tokens to rent or hire services. Secondly, they can be the vendor. The vendor is the asset owner or the freelancer, the service provider. The third role they can play is known as the arbitrator. The arbitrator is basically the judge of the system who will settle disputes. 
Most deals on the system are fairly straightforward and are done with smart contracts. However, if there is the occasional dispute, the deal then goes to arbitration. The Warno system itself has the capacity to do automated arbitration. So if there was a simple case, for example, um, the customer was unable to finance a deal after committing to it, in such a simple dispute, the system is able to determine who is right and who is wrong. But in a case that is less straightforward, the case will then go to open arbitration. Open arbitration is a process where other token holders are allowed to examine the case and vote for the right outcome. Each arbitration case will only have a 24 hours window period to be concluded. Arbitration will require the arbitrators, the, the judges, to first fork out some of their own tokens to stake in the decision that they believe to be right. At the end, the larger number of tokens stake becomes the consensus verdict of the community. Arbitrators who voted correctly will be rewarded with getting back their stake tokens as well as receiving a small commission. Now, even though it sounds very scary to stake your tokens as arbitrator, this is really a mechanism to prevent people from manipulating or sabotaging the system. Because the entire transaction in the first place is recorded on the Ethereum network, the transaction information is open and free to access. So in many cases, just looking at the information would mean that the verdict would be pretty clear who's right and who's wrong. The additional staking is to prevent any intentional malicious behavior. The fourth role that a user can play in the system is to be a guarantor. A guarantor is a very special role of a neutral third party who guarantees and assures both the customer as well as the vendor that the deal will be successfully completed and fairly done. Each deal will have a guarantor attached to them who tries to ensure that smooth transaction because when the deal is done, the guarantor receives a cut of the commission. Now, it is important to understand that the guarantor in the Wano system is not the same as a guarantor in circular business. In circular business, when we talk about guarantor, so for example, if I'm taking a bank loan and you are my guarantor, as my guarantor, you are insuring the worth of my asset. But in Wano, the guarantor is not insuring the worth of the asset, but the guarantor is insuring that the worth of the deal, that the deal will go through. The role of a guarantor is quite important because it ensures that whilst the whole system is still run by smart contracts, there is a human element, there is a human oversight for every case. So it's like a safety blanket for each transaction to try and make sure that um, all the transactions are smooth flowing. One of the main reasons why some people are afraid to use P2P businesses like Airbnb is because they feel that they cannot trust the promises made by the vendors. They are afraid that once they reach the place and visit the accommodation, they will be disappointed or let down. But Wano tries to negate the risk by providing several features such as a guarantor in place to ensure a smooth and trustworthy system. Guarantors will also have to stake their tokens initially. But when the deal is successfully completed, they will get their stakes back as well as a small cut out of that 1-5% to commission charge. Wano will also have a reputation system. This is a reputation that is built up from several different factors, including approval and ratings from others, reliability, activity on the platform, and all of these will have different weights attached to the different roles played. So it's quite a complicated process. The reputation will affect the amount of deal commission that the user receives. If you are a gamer, think of this reputation system as leveling up your account so that you can get better rewards as, or bigger rewards as your account levels up. There will be sub-small reputation for each of the sub-components, like uh, if you are a vendor, you have a rating system as a vendor. If you are a customer, you have a rating system for a customer, etc. Again, this is a very smart feature to try and discourage malicious behavior and to promote good behavior on the platform to try and promote and ensure a good and safe experience for users and vendors. As mentioned above, the entire Warno network uses the Ethereum blockchain. And except for information that is crucial to the user, for example, his personal information, all other information is secure but is open and secure. So every information about the transaction is open and secure on the blockchain. Any assets that are to be listed on the platform must first pass through a proof of ownership procedure. 
Now, one of the only drawbacks of the whole one of protocol potentially is the insurance of physical assets. That means the homes or the cars that are being rented out. You see, one of system can ensure or ensure that the deal will happen, but they cannot ensure that the assets will not be damaged. In other words, they can guarantee a deal will go through, but they cannot protect or ensure uh, what happens if the rented house or car is damaged. So to cover this risk, Wano will be working with third party insurance companies to ensure or insure against this risk. The insurance partners have not been announced yet. But in their white paper, they have stated that they are working with some companies to work towards a 25% discount for insurance services if people use the Warno token. And they will also ensure that there will be minimal paperwork to ensure a seamless issuing of policies. So if you're interested in this project, definitely keep your eye on this space. One last feature to mention is that Warno offers data collection and depersonalized reports. This is a feature that combines blockchain technology with AI, artificial intelligence technology. Users can agree to participate in a report generating program. That program will then collect their data as they use the platform and they will use the data in a depersonalized way. So no identification of the person, just for example, their preferences and, and other data. And the user will be rewarded for their participation with one tokens. The data that is collected will then go into a big pool of depersonalized data where an AI will analyze it and learn from it and will use it to make useful recommendations to businesses, including market forecasts or preferences of users. One example of a potential recommendation could be um, the AI would find from the data that users who rent in a particular area of town have been noted to have a preference for Japanese culture. So then it might recommend that decorating the property in a Japanese um, decorative way might result in a higher likelihood for successful deals in the future. Now, if you've watched our NCash or URLP reviews, you would know that this report generating service, this uh, collecting of data and uh, generating a suitable recommendation is a very sought after services in the service uh, industry. And blockchain and AI combined technologies are very ideal to collect, protect, and process the information. So beyond just the marketplace aspect of Warno, I think that this is potentially a very attractive feature of the project. The Warno app itself will be a very easy to install and use app, and it will be available on all devices. It will also be compatible with login from all major social media platforms, example, Google, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. This is the team behind the project. Their CEO is Alexander Yuslalov, an entrepreneur and marketing expert. He has previously founded successful startups such as Greeter, which is a products marketplace, Alex Games and Burn to Earn, which is a fitness reality show, and SPB Fighters, which is an MMA reality show. Their CEO is Andre Shefalev, who is currently also the editor-in-chief and project manager at Colasar.ru. In four years, he raised the website's monthly audience from 0.7 million to 2 million viewers and developed it from a small regional media into the number five biggest automotive media site in Russia. He also previously worked with the CEO Alexander at Alex Games and Burn to Earn. You can go through the rest of the team's resume yourself. It's a rather young team, but the roles and experience on the team are well balanced between marketing and tech developer. In fact, I think that this might be the first blockchain project where I've seen more marketing leadership than uh, technological developers um, in the team. And this may actually go well in the current blockchain space where marketing of good projects is often neglected. The project also has five advisors who have a wide range of expertise, ranging from blockchain marketing to legal advice to accommodation and travel experts. So these are all guys, all five advisors are guys with a lot of experience and success in their various fields. This looks like a solid board of advisors. This is their roadmap. It's a rather long roadmap that goes all the way to the second quarter of 2020. Most of this year, 2018, will be developing their technology and services. In the fourth quarter of 2018, so the end of this year, is when we will see the Warno protocol start publishing. And I will consider that their MVP or minimal viable product. An MVP is very important to any blockchain project because an MVP proves to the world that their technology is viable.
and MVP significantly lowers the risk of investing in any project. However, in a utility project like Wano, because the technological demands are actually not that high as opposed to a blockchain protocol project, so then it's often assumed that utility projects should be able to deliver on their MVP. The more important fundamentals to pay uh, attention to in a utility project are things such as their offered features, the market penetration, the economics, the partners, etc. The first quarter of 2019 will be the launch of the Wano API, and the second quarter of 2019 will be the launch of the Wano trial version. It is only in the first quarter of 2020 that we will see the launch of the actual partner program, product strategy updates, etc. So basically, buying into the project now would mean quite a long huddle, but it would also mean that you are getting in at a very big discount. So it all depends on how much you believe in the project and what kind of risk-taking investor you are. Finally, let's take a look at their token economics. The fundraising will be selling 60% of their total tokens. 60% is quite a large proportion to sell. Usually, uh, projects in the ICO only sell 30 to 40% of the total tokens. In this case, the significance of selling such a large proportion uh, means that when they launch on the exchanges, they will have a significantly lower market cap than others. So, for example, the hard cap of this project, of their whole fundraising, is 20 million USD. Now, if the token proportion that was being sold was only 30%, then working forward, the estimated market cap when they hit the exchanges would be worth over 60 million. However, in this case, because the 20 million hard cap is representative of 60% of their total um, supply, even if they hit the, mark, the hard cap, their initial market cap when they hit the exchanges will be a maximum of only 36 million. So that's a very small market cap for a project like this. Furthermore, this is a multi-billion dollar industry that we're talking about, which means that there is a lot of room to grow. So buying into an ICO that has a low market cap is always an attractive feature. In addition, because they are already selling 60% of their total supply, there isn't any plan to release more tokens in the future. So in other words, you don't have any plans for further dilution of the circulating supply in the future. So that's a positive again for token price. Each one or token will only be worth 50 cents USD. So overall, I feel this is a rather attractive entry price for an ICO with a very low market cap. The fundraising will take place over five rounds. The first two rounds will be pre-sale. The private pre-sale is already happening right now and it's offering 30% bonus. So that's a really uh, a rather big bonus. The public sale hasn't been announced yet, but according to the white paper, it is expected to happen in June. So we can expect it sometime over the next few days. The ICO will take place on in July and the third and fourth round will have a bonus of 10 and 5% respectively. So that's decent, not too big. And it's, uh, but each of those third and fourth round will only account for a million dollar sale each. So it's a very small portion of the entire sale. The bulk of over half the tokens will be sold in the fifth round with no discount. So this is a good thing. Now, usually with very big discounts over 25%, there is a risk of dumps when the token hit the exchanges because people who have bought it at a very big discount, once it hit the exchanges, immediately they have over 25% gains. So then there becomes the temptation to dump the coin. To prevent this from happening, in the Warner project or the ICO, all bonuses that exceed 15% will be paid in two different parts. The first 15% of the bonus will be received on the first day and the remaining 15% will be received two months later. So this staggered distribution is a common strategy to avoid dumping and it's good to see that the team is using it to address the potential problem. Furthermore, more than half the tokens, right? So 11 million out of 20 million, will be sold in one single round, round five, with no bonuses. So the fact that the proportion of investors uh, who are actually receiving the big bonus is very small, this is reassuring that uh, even if they tried to dump, it wouldn't affect the token price very much at all. So on the whole, I think that the token mechanics of this project is healthy. The Twitter or social media of this um, project, the Warner project, the Twitter has over 12,000 followers and their Telegram group has over 24,000 members already. 
This is very huge for a project that hasn't even hit a public pre-sale. Usually at this stage of the ICO, if the Twitter has somewhere around 6-7k or the Telegram has under 10,000 members, that is a pretty decent number already. So their social following is very big. The social media numbers is important to note for any ICO because the bigger the social media community, the more awareness there is of the project, which means that when they hit, it is more likely that they will hit their hard cap number one, but it's also more likely that the tokens will see a surge when they first hit the exchanges because due to regulation and a number of other factors, it's likely that there will be a lot of people who are aware of the project but unable to participate in the ICO. So then with a very big numbers in the social media, okay, uh, once they hit the exchanges, the people who couldn't get in were FOMO and buy, and that's where you see the price rise. So with the current numbers being quite impressive already, I think that this project should have no problem having a successful fundraising. In conclusion, I think Warno is a project with a lot of potential. Things I would pay attention to moving forward would include their partnerships, the MVP at the end of the year, and the third-party asset insurance. The P2P market is a very fast-growing and lucrative industry, and I think that moving forward, we will see a lot of blockchain projects come up in this space. We've already seen some other recent good projects like Blue Whale come into the space, and Blue Whale is a project that focuses on the freelancing community. Warno goes a step further in its scope to include not just freelancing but rental, transport and miscellaneous P2P businesses as well. It's a very ambitious project that is taking on giants such as Airbnb and Uber. And the impressive thing is, why not? In an industry where people first started using those services because they were cheaper, Warno is offering an even cheaper solution by 30 to 40%. Simply because of the discount, I think people will pay attention to this project. Furthermore, it is non-taxable in many countries and has multiple features to ensure and safeguard the quality of each transaction more so than Airbnb and Uber. So I think that Warno is a project worth paying attention to. That's it guys, those are my thoughts on Warno. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of Warno. If you found this video helpful, do give us that like and subscribe. And also do join our Telegram group to discuss more about small coins with potential like Warno. We have over 50 coins in the lineup for review. It's quite possible that I will not be able to cover all of them. So our Telegram group is the place to learn about what other coins are on our radar. I hope to see you there. Have a fantastic day and I will catch up with you guys with another review very soon.